Hello, this is Lucas with N2V Solutions. Today we're going to go over how to use your new Grand Stream phone system. A lot of people have difficulty transitioning from the older systems to the newer systems and there's subtle differences that we're going to go over today. With every customer that we set up, we set up a, a tip sheet for them that shows them how to answer a call, make a call, transfer a call, uh, what call forwarding and how, what it is and how it works, uh, the difference between hold and call park. Uh, making a conference call and setting up your voicemail. So we're going to go through the different pieces today and hopefully this will help you understand how to use your new Grand Stream phone system. Alright, to start we're going to go through answering a call and making a call. It's pretty straightforward. You have a few different buttons. Um, on the phones themselves, they all have this green phone button and a speaker button. You can press either one when a call comes in and it will answer the call and automatically put the phone on speaker. The soft keys, soft keys are keys that will change as your screen changes and that's what these buttons are for. They reference the soft keys above, above them. When a call comes in, this is going to change to say answer or reject. And if you hit answer, that will answer the call. It will put it automatically onto speakerphone unless you have a pre-configured headset. And if you have a headset, it'll send it to the headset. If you pick up the handset, that will also answer the call and put it right on the handset. Um, to flip back to the speakerphone, you press the speaker button and hang up the phone and the speaker will stay on. So let's see what that looks like in action. I'm gonna call over from this phone right over here the ringing comes through and you can pick up the handset, you can hit the answer button like I said, or either one of these. I'm going to hit one of these to answer and it's going to put it on speaker. And we're going to mute the mics because we're right next to each other. Now you have the call on and it's as simple as that. To place a call, it's very similar. You don't have to get a dial tone anymore, you can if you want. And then you can start dialing. You can pick up the handset, get a dial tone here and start dialing. Or you can just dial the number first. So whatever you want to do, you can type in your number. If you need to make a correction, if you don't, if you didn't get the dial tone, if you waited to, to, to press anything and just started dialing, you'll be able to backspace and punch in new numbers again. When you get all of that punched in, you can press the dial soft key, you can press one of the phone icons down here, or you can just pick up the handset and it will call that number. All of them will work. All right, now we are going to go through how to transfer a call. Transferring a call can happen in two ways. You can do a blind transfer, and an assisted transfer. The blind transfer, you don't care if a person's ready, you're sending the call, no questions asked, they're gonna get it. The assisted transfer, you wanna to talk to the person for some reason or another before you send them the call. And so we're gonna look at what that looks like. To start, we're gonna get a call in, and this is gonna simulate that for us again. We answer that, and we're on a call. I'm talking to this person, hey, how you doing? I'll check if the person's here, hold on. I'm gonna hit the hard key, the transfer hard key, which is the phone to phone button. It's a picture of two phones on it, and that's your transfer key. We're gonna press that to do a blind transfer, and we can do two things. We can hit the button for the speed dial of the person we wanna send it to, and the call will just go. The phone's ringing, it gets picked up, that person's now on the phone with the original caller. And that's, that's the first blind transfer we can do. The second, we're gonna get that call back in. Is we can dial the extension by hand or we dial the phone number by hand. We're on the call, we're ready to do our blind transfer. We hit the transfer hard key, we dial the number. If we dial a number, we then have to push an additional button blind transfer at the end. That sends it and the call is gone off my phone 
gets sent over, he picks it up, they're on the call. That's the blind transfer. What about an assisted transfer? What does an assisted transfer look like? We get our call back in. And I'm going to transfer this to the, another person, but I'm going to talk to them before I send them the call. To do that, we're going to place a new call to that person. So that first call stays active and we place a new call to the person we want to transfer to. So we're actually calling the person we want to transfer to. So we have to put this one on hold, grab a new line, and make that call. We can do that with one button press if you have a speed dial for them. The phone system will put the first caller on hold, it'll grab a new line, and make that call all for you just by pressing the speed dial. Watch. First one's on hold. New line. Hello. Hello. They answer. I got a call for you. I'm going to send it through. Now, from this new call that I made, I transfer back to the first one. So the hard transfer key, and then I press the first call that we had in, and it connects those two calls together and sends it away. And again, you can see that those are on the phone together. So I got to talk to them, then I connected the two calls together. That's the difference between a blind transfer and an assisted transfer. Some people have asked, can I use the intercom mode and still transfer a call? And the answer is no. If you're going to intercom somebody and still transfer the call, you'll have to hang up the intercom and transfer the call afterwards. All right, let's talk about call forwarding. If you want to leave your desk and go somewhere else, or you're gonna be gone for the day, or whatever reason, you want your calls from that go to your phone to forward on somewhere else. We can forward those calls to another in-office phone. We can forward them to a cell phone or another number. Um, anything that you want to forward to, we can forward them to as long as your phone system allows to make that call. So what does that look like? The phones have a forward all soft key built right into them. If you don't want to dial, if you don't want to press that button or that button's not there for some reason, you can dial star 72. When you do that, it asks for the number to set the call forward to. You can dial an extension, you can dial a phone number, anyone you want. Press OK and the forward gets put in place. So now anything coming into this phone will automatically get forwarded on, like this. It doesn't even ring, and it gets forwarded right through to the extension I put in that, so that phone ringing. And they can pick it up and answer it. And we don't even hear the call or get a missed call here. You can verify that the forward's in place because you get a green phone with a little arrow by it, by the line key as well as at the top of the phone. Um, some of the uh, smaller versions of the phones have a little bit different layouts, but the same, same general buttons are there. So, to cancel the forward, this forward all button has turned to a cancel forward button. So we can press that, or if you don't have that button, you can dial star 73. It automatically cancels it, the green buttons go away, and you're good to go. Now, having said that, people are, have asked me, well, what if I have a group of phones that ring together. Um, an incoming call comes in, it rings a group of phones, and I put a call forward on my phone. Will that forward the incoming calls for the business to, to whatever I'm forwarding to? And the answer is no. The call forward only affects directly dialed calls. So if you're getting somebody in the office calling your extension directly, or if you have an inbound call, um, a DID, that goes straight to your extension and nowhere else, those are the types of calls that get forwarded. Um, ring group calls, call queue calls, some people call it a hunt group, those kind of calls do not get call forwarded. They get ignored by the call forward. Um, it, tip, it basically sees it as, as an away setting at that point. So you can set the forward button with the button soft key or with the keystroke and you can turn it off the same way. Um, if you're not receiving calls, one of the best things to do is to make sure you don't have that little phone icon with an arrow next to it because you might have a call forward set and not even realize it. 
There you go. All right, now we're gonna go over how to do a conference call from the phone. There are two different kinds of conference calls the phone system can make. One, it's hosted by the phone and there can be three callers on together. You, the first person you're talking to and you can add in a third person. The other type of conference call is using the phone system itself to host the call. In that kind, everybody calls into a certain extension and you can have 20 people on at a time. We're going to go over just the one that the phone can do right now. On the phone is a little button with, a, looks like three heads on it, three-way call. And that's the button we're going to end up using. To start, you start off with a regular phone call. Call comes in from somewhere else, could be another phone locally, could be an outside number calling in, either one. But we're on a call and we want to add in a third person. To do that, we press the conference call button. The phone is going to grab a new line while putting that first caller on hold. Let's see what that looks like. So I got a dial tone and the word conference here. You don't see the first caller on hold, but they're on hold listening to hold music right now. Now we're going to dial the person that we want to add into the call or press their speed dial button. Now you can see that first person on hold and the, uh, the new call right here. That happens after you press dial. So I'm talking to new person now. Hey, we got a call. Um, we're going to conference you in with the first person here and so we can all talk together. He agrees and you press the conference call soft key to complete the conference call and bring all three people together. Now we got two lights on. It shows the information for both of the callers and what their numbers are. And there's even a button here called kick. So if I arrow down or up, oh, it's not going to let me choose, there we go. You can press the kick button and pick which user you want to kick off of this conference call. So I made the call originally from here, but I can kick that one out. And if I choose the right one, there we go. And now I kick that one caller off and I'm just on the call with the second one. So I can, I can hang up on either of the two people, but if I hang up the call itself, it closes out the entire conference call. I can't hang up and let the other two people talk to each other. I'm the host and if I hang up, it all drops. When you're all done, do just that. You hang up, all of the call is lost, and you're back to normal. Now we're going to talk about call park and hold. Why do I need them both? What are they? What is call park? Call park wasn't on my old system. These are all things I've heard. So we're going to go over what call park does, why we need it, and how it compares to hold. To start, let's get a call in. So we get a call in and if we want to put somebody on hold, typically what we're going to do is press the pause key. It's a hard key on the phone. It puts the first person on hold. They get hold music, but only this phone can pick up that call. The pause button is hold for one phone. Nobody else gets it. Nobody else can even tell that I'm on the phone other than, than my red light being on. So if I want that call back, I press the line key or hit the pause key again and it'll bring that call back. It's just for me. Well, what if I want to put somebody on a hold and pick it up at a different phone? Good point. That's why we need call park. Think of call park like hold, but for the entire office. If it's programmed correctly, you'll have a park button on a speed dial. On the Grand Street phones without the side key, you have to hit the minimize button here to see your speed dials. In this case, I've got one right here, Park 701. I've got it over here as well. I put it in two places so I can show you that if I hit Park over here, that will put the call into that slot. And this button tells me that there is somebody in there. 
Now I can call somebody else and say, hey, you've got a call in 701. They pick up their phone in 701 and they'll get that call. Or if they have a corresponding button on their phone, they just press the button and they get the call back. It's that simple. So it's hold for the entire system. And you can have multiple slots. You can have two slots or four slots, eight slots. It's entirely up to how you want to program your phone. So these don't come this way by default. You have to program them or your, your technical support has to program the phones to have these buttons. You can, you can press the parking slot over here. I can minimize and press it here. Either way, it'll throw the call into that slot. They'll get hold music, and after a time, if nobody picks it up, it'll ring back the person that put it in the slot. So it's hold for the entire system versus the pause button, which is hold for just your phone. So park is important. Um, a lot of people use it instead of transferring. They'll park a call and then call somebody and just tell them, you've got a call in 701. And when they're ready, they'll pick it up. So it, it makes life easier. Now we're going to go through how to use your voicemail and how to set it up. So to start, every phone has a button on it. It looks like an envelope. It's a hard key. That's your voicemail. Um, there are a couple of different ways to set up your voicemail and depending on how your uh, provider set up your account, it will act a little differently. The uh, shortcuts for it are star 97 and star 98. So star 98 will prompt you for um, entering the extension number. So it wants to know the extension number. Right. And that star 97 will skip asking for uh, the extension number and will take you straight into the extension number of the phone that you're on. So if I dial that one, it already password. knows and it wants the password right away. On your phone system, there is a button you can check that says skip password verification if you're on your own phone. Um, we don't have that turned on here, but if you, if you press your voicemail button or dial the star 97, it will skip right past asking for a password if, and go right into the voicemail of the extension that's on the phone. So in this case, it is going to prompt us for the password and we're gonna go from there. The voicemail button does whatever's programmed into the phone to do. It could do star 97, it could do star 98. Um, in this case, we have it programmed to do star 97, so that's what's gonna happen. So we press that, password. it wants the password. You punch it in, and it goes into you the have options. No messages. Press two to change folders. Press three for advanced options. Press zero for mailbox options. So it gave us a few different choices there to switch folders, to go into voicemail options. Um, if we would have had a message, it would have said press one to play your message, and that's what we would have pressed. Um, just listen to the cues. It'll tell you seven deletes a message, six plays the next. And, and the best thing to do is just get familiar with it. Listen to what it says and make the best choice. The more often you do it, the more you can just do it from memory. It works pretty slow. Zero is your uh, mailbox options, and those are the ones that you want to log in and set up right away. There's a few different things to do in Zero. Press one to record your unavailable message, two for busy message, three for your name, four for temporary, and five to change your password. So you should start with number five and get that password changed. Follow the prompts, record your messages, and you're good to go.